Now that we have finished our design, the club has decided they want this now to go to a professional printer because we need more copies than we originally thought. So what does that mean for us as the designer? Well, a professional printer wants a bleed area all the way around the outside, so we need to introduce that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure Snap to Page is turned on. I've already turned that on because I want to add some guidelines. That's a new feature to X5. And look how easy that makes it to simply snap some guidelines to my page border. Well, the next thing we need to do is increase the size of the background image. So finger on control, select background, mesh fill and the tree because we want it all to resize proportionately. Make sure the little lock is on because I'm only going to adjust the vertical height. Now I'm going to add a, uh, an extra amount of bleed of 3 millimeters top and bottom because most printers want between 3 and 5 millimeters. So make sure you call your printer and ask. So I'm going to type in 86. And of course that resizes proportionately all the way around. Now the advantage of this is if we go to print and pre-press turn on the crop fold marks, I'll go to print preview so that you can see this, where the page border is underneath it automatically adds crop marks so our printer knows where to guillotine away the edges and that's all there is to it. Okay, I'm just going to cancel that so remember you can turn those on and when you create a soft proof or a PDF you can also turn on crop marks there as well. Now because we're going to utilize our design for other purposes as well, I just want to make sure it's proportional. So I'm going to crop away the edges. So selecting my crop tool, and I think we'll type in the numbers. 256, now allowing for that extra 3 millimeters on either side, by 86. And of course, center of our page, 125 by 40. Hit enter, and then just simply double click. And cropping away those additional edges, of course, makes our design look more like it did originally, which is good because we may use it for some other purposes. Well, I just need to adjust the text because the background moved. Now, I can't see the line that was used to place the text on, so up to View, Simple Wireframe Mode, and that allows you to see the basic elements, even though uh, in this case there was no color to that line. In Simple Wireframe Mode, you can easily see the basic elements of everything and I go here all the time. See a couple of quick movements and we are there. Of course what we need to do now is simply shift the text along. Now I've shown you how to do that before so I'll go ahead and just quickly edit that. And that looks better. So now I'm going to come up to Window, Dockers and we're going to look at color proof settings for our professional print. The advantage in color proofing is you can see any potential areas of problem before going to print. Well the first thing you need to do is ring your printer and find out what color profile or what environment do they work within. And in the US most likely it will be US web coated. If we were going to print to our local printer off our computer we might run with sRGB. It's a good option to try if you're not happy with your results. So I'll select US web coated turn on proof colors and instantly we can see all the greens are out of gamut. I'll turn that on and you can see that the greens are outside of the printability of this color profile. So they're being shifted to a darker green. Well, the first thing that stands out is the shadow is way too dark. This is the advantage of simulating an environment. So we can make changes. Go back to the object manager, select the shadow and I think what I'll do is I'll just apply a little bit more transparency and there we go that does look a lot better or we could have gone back to photo paint well of course you would adjust your image however you feel you need to and once you're happy you would then create a soft proof so we'll click soft proof and I'm going to go with the PDF option so we'll click export and under the tabs, make sure you connect with your printer as to what version of Acrobat they have. Under the color tab, make sure the embedded profile is selected and it will be by default because we've come from the color proof settings docker. And under the objects tab, you might want to adjust your JPEG quality because it's only a proof. We don't need a high quality uh, JPEG here. And export all text as curves is a good option to have on you don't have to send off the fonts that way. Well, let's click OK and open the PDF. 
and what an absolutely brilliant representation it is of our actual design. You see, the advantage of this, of course, is we send it off to the printer and both the printer knows what you're expecting, but also you know what you should be expecting. That's the advantage of color proofing. So we'll just close that down. And of course, once the proof has been approved by everybody, we would want to send all of this off to the printer. So file, collect for output, and we'll run with the automatically gather all associated files. Uh, this is where we'll choose the quality of the PDF, and of course we want a pre-press version, which is high quality. If they use Corel Draw, your printer, include the CDR file, definitely include all of the used fonts. And of course the profiles, the color profiles we have been working with, we want to include those so the printer sees what we have been seeing. We'll place all of this into a zip folder, click next, and then we can send that resulting zip file off to the printer and we feel safe knowing they have everything that we have used to create our design. Okay, we've sent everything off to the printer. What about creating a banner that we can put on the window of the club we're doing the design for? Well, a great way to do this is come to print and we'll go straight to print preview and I'm going to come up to print options We'll go along to the Layout tab, and I'm just going to turn on Print Tiled Pages. Now you watch this. I'll click OK, and automatically we see four pages in our little image position there. Well, I can select the image, and I can begin to resize the image. I actually think this will fit across two pages rather than four, so I'll drag that up there like that, pop it right in the top left corner so I get maximum area, and I'll resize. Don't go past my dotted line area, which is my maximum print area. And really what I've done is I've now created two tiled pages. So our image now is going to span across these two pages when we print from our printer. We can simply cut along the edge, stick the edges together, and we've got a great banner. Of course, if you've got an A3 printer, you could go even larger. Now also, you can physically type a size in up here. Of course, I manually did all of that, but if you have a specific size and enough paper, you could almost print whatever size you want, spanning across multiple pages. Let's assume now that we want to export this image for the web. Well, normally we'd simply come up and choose export and choose your file type. And of course, there are so many file types to choose from. Normally for the web, we work with JPEGs, PNG files, or GIF files. There's a general rule where well, you could choose one of those and move forward. However, it's easier to come up to File and work with the new Export for Web dialog. The reason why is because, in fact, this would really look the same if you went the other route. But the advantage here is you have access to all of the file types that are specifically used for the web. So here we can get to GIF files, JPEGs, and PNGs within the one dialog box. And the other advantage, these presets are absolutely brilliant. So if you're not terribly familiar with working with the web, then these presets are absolutely fantastic. Watch this. I'll choose a medium quality JPEG. And I'll just uh, demonstrate this to you first of all. The top preview pane is a real-time pane, as is the bottom preview pane. In other words, as we make a change, in real time we see what happens. Right now, the top pane is set to my original, and the bottom pane, of course, whatever I adjust here. I could change the top pane to have a look at what a GIF file looks like and compare a GIF file to my JPEG, for example. However, Look at the file size, 210 kilobytes, and look at the quality. That is absolutely brilliant. Very, very tiny little bit of banding in that area there, but really that's a fantastic result. If we go with a, I'll just go with a high quality JPEG, I want you to see the size, 343 kilobytes, and as I move in, you can barely see any degradation at all. They really are great presets. So again, if you're unfamiliar with the web and how to work with presets for the web or coming up with your own settings, just run with the options that are here. I often get asked about what does anti-aliasing mean? Well, to see this, I'm quickly going to turn up the quality so there's no degradation in this corner here. Let's turn off anti-aliasing and watch what happens. See all the jaggies that appear? And up the top you can see all those jagged corners have been filled in. Well, that's what anti-aliasing does. It fills in the jaggies on corners. 
Well, if you need any more information whatsoever, make sure you check out the guidebook.